warning. Thunder Talk contains foul language, adult subject matter, and is intended for mature audiences. Hello, Thunder Elves. Welcome to the Thunder Talk Holiday Special. We review Marvel's latest trailers. Beth and Kavika discuss their viewing preferences in a new segment called What's on Our Tube. We all reveal our favorite Christmas gifts. Dan had a birthday. Light up Hanukkah sweaters, Wonder Bars, The War on Christmas, and much more. Lightning Lad, roll the thunder. From the smoking section of the Nerd Bliss Podcast, The Weirdos Workshop presents... Thunder Talk. Beth. Sexy Thor. Kavika. Thunder Talk. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. How are y'all doing? Pretty good. Uh, we just finished celebrating all the nights of Hanukkah, so there's that. Eight crazy nights. Oh, right on. Right on. Awesome. Y'all have a good, good, y'all have a good Hanukkah? It was. It was excellent. Um, I made out with all kinds of really cool loot, and we ate some good food. Lit some candles. So all, all the best things. I was at a party recently, and I made out with some dude. You did? Wh- Wait, what? What's your type? The experience was rather... Uh, en- enlightening? Electrifying. <laughs> Yeah, I had, like, really bad cigarette nacho breath, too. Like, I felt bad about it afterwards. <laughs> Trouble in paradise. It's like, Dan, how do you feel about making out with the dude? My response is, well, I don't know. I, I wish I'd shoot some gum or something. Did he buy you flowers or anything? Nah, I, I, ain't, I ain't fancy like that. Make sure your expectations are where they should be, and make sure you're not uh, expecting more than you're going to get. Yeah, like, I'm full of empty promises, but I'll totally make out with the dude. Set, set your expectations to that. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. We just want to know, like, what the situation is. We're trying to be good friends and just see where it's, things we're are. We're supporting you. It's like, I, I like, sometimes I just like to make out. At least you're not pregnant. Well. Are you pregnant? Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, uh, oh, we should do a, uh, a what would Thor do? Um. Go, go ahead, Beth. Across the rainbow bridge of Asgard, where the booming heaven pour, you behold in breathless wonder the god of thunder, mighty Thor. In today's political climate, <laughs> there's a war going no, I on. I can't do it. An unspoken war. The war on Christmas. Sexy Thor. And the war on Christmas, who would your allies be? Well, it's funny that you speak of this war on Christmas because me and my usual cohorts that fight everything together, uh, we fought my brother and the frost giant Ymir, for they tried to kidnap Yolnir, or as it's called in today's civilization, Santa Claus. And we rescued Santa Claus and even... uh, Mrs. Claus flew down from the ship with the talking tree and the rabbit. So, I mean, I guess the war on Christmas isn't really any different than the Battle of New York or the Snappening or anything like that. My allies would be my allies for everything. I guess we're just ride or die like that. I don't know. I might be calling bullshit on that. Like Captain America, da-da-da, all those fucking people. Uh, I mean, that's good against, uh, like death robots and, and like space bad guys. But what about like against Bill O'Reilly? You know, I mean, are you telling me that cat, are you telling me that Captain America like doesn't fucking watch Bill O'Reilly every goddamn night? If we're going to go war on Christmas and we're going to have an ally, I'm definitely taking the faux news or Fox news because they will frame it so everybody is like, it's the alarm jobs. We're on Christmas. <laughs> I don't know. They're pretty good at the propaganda. So, so you think Fox News would be a better ally than, say, like Iron Man against the war on Christmas? It, hearts and minds. Hearts and minds. <laughs> it doesn't matter if the whole civilization falls down. 
I mean, Iron Man can protect you from actual villains, but he can't. Pro- Does he have a spin machine? Oh, he has Pepper Potts, doesn't he? Yes, Pepper. It's her fucking name, <laughs> Potts, right? It's yes, been- Pepper Potts. Yeah, like whenever one of Trump's cronies is indicted or is fired uh, or, or otherwise leaves, uh, an angel gets its wings. But that's all petty Megardian stuff. My actual brother has actually kidnapped Santa Claus. There's your war on Christmas. Oh, shit. Here, here's a war on Christmas for you. Is Jesus and Santa Claus like the same person, like the Hulk? Dr. Jesus and Mr. Claus. What's going on with that? Fox listeners want to know. Or are they also the Easter Bunny? And therefore three people at once. What about the Tooth Fairy? (laughs) Yeah, I was about to say, what about the Tooth Fairy? That evil bitch be taking teeth forever. What is she even doing with them all? Voodoo. That might be a secret fourth personality. Like a power-up. Break a fourth wall. (laughs) <laughs> Christ pool. Wow, Christ pool. That would be. Could you imagine that? A sarcastic Jesus, like telling you to eat fish and drink wine. Deadpool got a side gig. Like if Jesus and Santa Claus are, are the Hulk, what? Like what? What triggers? What triggers Jesus into Santa Claus? Is, is this like a, an event? When someone writes Xmas instead of Christmas, Jesus hulks right up into Santa. Throws presents at your at the heads of the non-believers. Is it think is it is it like Thanksgiving? Yeah, like Thanksgiving. Good yeah. deeds. Or if he has to have a negative side effect, or if he has to have a negative side effect to turn thin one of the seven deadly sins. I mean, what else are they there for than to t- trigger Jesus' transformations? Like greed, like Black Friday greed is what makes Jesus go and become Santa Claus. And then the glutton of feast and drinks at New Year's turns him back into Jesus getting ready for Easter. But then like like New Year's Day, Jesus is all fucking holding his head like like he's hung over like because like, he's been hulked out for over a month and it's all taxing on him. And he's like, oh, fuck, what did I exactly. do? Exactly. What did I fuck? What did I fucking do? Explain to me his magic where he can get. I guess Jesus is always in your home, always in your heart. But anyway, how does Santa get through the chimney? I mean, the Asgardian name for Santa Claus is Yolnir, which is just a letter short of Mjolnir. So using the explanation of the science of my hammer, y'all can just put two and two together from there. Christmas magic, bitch. Is it a Bifrost bridge? The Bifrost bypasses uh, the, all chimneys. That's how, you know what? That makes complete sense. That's how he can get to everybody's place all at the same time. He can fold space time like that. Fold space time. I wonder how Santa Claus feels about ugly Christmas sweaters. Does he just view all sweaters as being beautiful? I, you know, I mean, I think you answered your own question because I think the answer is yes. That's, that's, I think all sweaters are beautiful in the eyes of Santa. Uh, that, that, that's, that's even kind of an echo of like the Jesus in him. You know, like everything's beautiful. Well, not necessarily, but sweaters are. Or the ugly Christmas sweaters trigger another secret transformation into Krampus. Oh. oh. Bringing in new levels there. Fucking Krampus is terrifying. Like Bobby Yaga. Bobby Yaga is fucking terrifying too. Bobby Yaga. Maybe that's Santa's, like, mean aunt. Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga. Yeah, right. Or it's like his, uh, like his way super jealous sister-in-law. Or his just twisted sister, you know. His twisted sister. <laughs> <laughs> D. Snyder. Fuck D. Yeah. Snyder is Baba Yaga as Santa's sister-in-law. I just know Kurt from Ant-Man and the Wasp was definitely terrified of Baba Yaga. Uh, speaking of Kurtz, I met Kurt Cameron once at a gas station in Malibu. Did he wow, try to save fancy. you? Wow, that's fancy. What's that? Did he try to save you? Uh, yeah, well, in a way. he I had pulled up uh, in my car with some friends, and just on the pumps next to us, uh, up from us, uh, was this white van. And I look over, and pumping the, white, pumping the gas is, is Kurt Cameron. And my friend and I are staring at him. And he's looking at us, and he's like, hey. And I'm like, hey, you're... 
And I, I blanked on his name. I totally blanked. I'm like, yeah, and you're – I'm pointing at him. And you know what he said <laughs> to be charming and funny? And mind you, this is like 2001. When he's I'm like, saying? I blank on his name. And I'm like, hey, and you're – and he goes, yeah, I'm Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> True fucking story. Oh, shit. That's a, a great story. That's a good one. And then he came and was like, hi. And we shook hands. And he's like, do you like movies? And I'm like, um, then he gave me a pamphlet. He pulled out a pamphlet, uh, like, you know, like one of those Christian, like, tracks. They call them tracks, which is strange. Yes. Like this, it's like, otherwise, it's like a folded brochure. But if it has Christian stuff in it, it's now a, a tract. Anyway, he pulls it out, and he signs it. He pulls out a pen and signs it and hands it to me. And it's, uh, I forget what the lesson was. I think it's that Jesus hates something. And then he handed me another, uh, what looked like a tract, which was an advertisement a little a little pamphlet if you will for his new movie uh um left behind left no no left behind two tribulation force oh yeah oh my god <laughs> and it was the trippy part was like he, he autographed the tract about you know god is mad at shit that you know normal boring white people can't handle uh but then he did an autograph like a little pamphlet about uh yeah left behind two Tribulation Force. As long as we got each other, we got the world spinning right in our hands, baby, you and me, we gotta be. Why should I listen to the Nerd Bliss Podcast? Because we go there. Where? Everywhere. Human sexuality. They don't care what's in your pants, they love you anyway. Time travelers. The problem is time will f*** back with you. Politics and fandom. What Star Wars has been prior to Disney. It is a white male-driven universe. Find us at nerdblisspodcast.com. And on social media at nerdblisspod. Part of this complete breakfast and the ESO Network. The, the Nerd Bliss, Bliss Podcast. Podcast. Listen! Fuck, why is Old Spice cool, dude? My dad used Old Spice. My dad's dad used Old Spice. My grandpa used Old Spice, but... Yeah, right? I mean, your grandpa was probably uh, a lot of great things, but, like, fucking woke and cool. Uh, my grandpa had that Darth Maul museum. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. yeah, I mean, here I am judging Old Spice, but really, uh, I think I'm just kind of judging my own hang-ups. Yeah. I mean, have you ever seen an Old Spice where judge us? Oh, yeah. I told you my dad wore Old Spice, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, Old Spice and I, we got, I mean, you know, fuck Old Spice. Whatever. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a new Captain Marvel trailer that dropped last week. And at the same fucking time, we finally got a Avengers 4 trailer. Uh, well, Captain Marvel, first off. Uh, she's been established as a Cree. She she claims to be a Cree. She Samuel Jackson's like so da 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 dialogue, and she's like da 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 Cree. You're a Cree, a race of noble warriors, heroes, noble warrior heroes. Uh, what else? What else do we see in that trailer? We see her punch the old lady again, and it definitely turns out to be a scroll. That's something they actually I think they had to do because in the first trailer she punches the lady. And then the trailer just keeps going. And yeah, some not, people, not everybody knows what a scroll is. No, for real. The internet was like, what? Look at what? She's going around punching old ladies? Like old lady fighter? <laughs> what is this? The 15th, the 25th Marvel film? And that's that's pretty bottom of the barrel right there, Disney. <laughs> it's like, you know, we really just m maximized and topped out the v whole villains with Thanos last film. Now we're going straight for old ladies. And Nick Fury likes cats. Aren't you the cutest little thing? Aren't you cute? Yeah, well, I'm like a Nick Fury, dude. He looks fucking great. I know. Like, I know they had to do some de-age junk or whatever. Yeah. Now, this movie takes place, what, early, mid-90s? 1995. 1995. He looks like Samuel L. Jackson from 1995. When I first saw the set photos with him all de-aged and stuff, he looked exactly like he did in a Triple X back in 2002, 2003. You know, I think... When you look at the technology, the whole de-aging technology, I think, like where they're coming together with it, a key component is cast actors that look fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know? Yeah. And uh, I think, I, I don't know if we've already discussed this, like, at the beginning of the first Ant-Man and even the beginning of Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, yeah, Michael, Michael, D- Michael Douglas looks mm, exactly like he does on yeah, Wall Street. It, yeah, it looks a little bit more shiny, a little bit more CG, but yeah, I, I think he, yeah, I think he pretty much, he looks pretty Wall Street solid. Well, he ain't no Kirk Douglas, because that was a man. Yeah. What else is going on in that trailer? You see the back of uh, Ronan, the uh, the bad guy. Ronan, the accuser. And yeah. you even see a uh, Korath as Paris. Oh yeah, as part of Star Force. Yeah, and he's he's chilling out. Jude Law shows up. And yeah. Maybe he's being a dick. Which we all initially think Jude Law is Marvel, but actually, with, with the Funko toy leak a couple weeks ago, his Funko is actually named Yon Rog, who's like an enemy of Marvel. He's like a major enemy of Marvel in the comics. Oh, I bet he's a scroll. And he's just making himself look like Jude Law. Because the Skrull, they're shapeshifters, right? Right. So as a Skrull, I could be like, I'm just going to go fucking Jude Law around today. I'm just going to Jude Law it up. You've come a long way. But you're not as strong as you think. And we see more of her best friend, Marie Rambeau, who's a hero and becomes her own little hero and is even a Captain Marvel at one point. Is that the other pilot that we see her like interacting with? Yep. When she's all Air Force? Okay. Oh, so that's that's also a Marvel character. Uh huh. Oh, crazy. Yeah. And at the very least, might be a uh, pretty key in helping Carol get her Earth memories back. Oh, you know what? I bet she will be the key of, you know, to getting her Earth memories back. I keep having these memories. Something in my past is the key to all of this. Speaking of keys, do we think Captain Marvel is going to be the key to getting Tony off of that defunct ship? In Avengers Endgame. All right, so now we're going to talk about Avengers Endgame trailer, first trailer. It's confirmed in this movie that uh, Pepper's going to be wearing her rescue armor, which that's literally what her Iron Man suit is called, is rescue. So, okay, it's like a spare set of keys for your wife after you, like, total the family car. Yeah, he probably got an idea to invent that after Iron Man 3 when he put the suit on her when Ben Kingsley went and fucked up his Malibu house. Hey, Miss Potts. If you find this recording, don't feel bad about this. Okay, see, I was going to say he's going to be all like, yeah, sorry, baby, I'm dead now, bye. And then we see Captain America and Black Widow and other action. Uh, Hawkeye's back. And then when we go back to the Milano, it's like Nebula's like, nah, we're fixed now. Because it's a Marvel movie and consequences are really fucking (laughs) rare. (laughs) (laughs) You don't really do consequences. True. What we do do is keep the plot moving forward, and these are some of those easily watchable movies, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm I'm borderline obnoxious about my love of Black Panther. When it came out on video, I watched it, and then immediately watched it again, both back to back. It's like Infinity War is like a long fucking movie, but it's doesn't feel like it. Doesn't feel like it's all amazing, and it's and it's almost like the same movie twice. I mean, it's like, you have an Infinity Stone and give it to me. (laughs) And you're like, no. Oh, well, I'm going to fucking kill and hurt and beat up the people you love and like. And then you'll be like, okay, well, here's the fucking stone. And that's Loki. And then he's all, uh, hey, wizard, give me the stone. And then uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. uh, Yeah, Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is like, no. And and I was like, fucking boom, boom. (laughs) I'm going (laughs) to. I'm going to kill Tony Stark and, okay, here like, you go. Gamora, tell me where the fucking soul stone is. No. Okay, I'm just going to torture Nebula. Oh, more. dude, yeah, no, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's like three movies, <laughs> right? Uh, and then when he gets the Mind Stone, let's bring these three movies, let's bring yeah. these three yeah. same movies together with uh, something new. Yeah. He's uh, like, oh, uh, you, he's, what's your name? He's like, shit, I was going to do a give me the stone, otherwise I'll kill your loved one. But I see you've already killed your loved one. Oh, he was so gonna I'm going to bring your loved one back and just rip it out of his head. Yeah, right. So there's the twist. The twist is, hey, I'm going to do the same thing I just did three times <laughs> to you. Wait, and then, you just did it. Oh, my God. You did it yourself. Baller. Baller. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thanos did exactly what he said he was going to do. He wiped out 50% of all living creatures. Hey, you want to be my new daughter? I just killed one. Yeah, that guy's are going around collecting daughters. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's something to empathize there with Thanos. It just uh, no one's been able to properly explain it to me yet. But that's okay. 
<laughs> That's okay. He, nobody's explained to him where daughters should come from. Yeah, you know what? I mean, what if it's just like, I don't even know where to go with that. Like, nobody ever sat Thanos down and taught him the birds and the bees. Yeah. You know, but he's talking about some kind of, like, bizarro cosmic equilibrium that like he's you, tasked with. You either acquire children through official ethical adoption agencies, or you acquire them by physical reproduction. Exactly, exactly. He's just Not going around just like... Not just killing half of their planet and taking them uh, away. For real, yeah. It's <laughs> like, uh, hey, I killed half your planet. Hey, little girl, let me give you some weapons to play with. <laughs> let's bail. <laughs> Here, try to balance this double-edged knife. Hey, now let's go, go to Chuck E. Cheese, right? Because that was like his mentality. It's like, right. you know, it's fucking, it's like, it's like your daughter is collecting uh, Monster High dolls <laughs> and listening to Justin Bieber and like, so is Thanos. <laughs> you know what I mean? We lost. All of us. You know what this is? He's, uh, what do they call them? Um, incel. He's an incel. Uh, uh, involuntarily celibate. Beta males, toxic, like like uh, the kind of guys that uh, are angry because they they can't get laid. Because <laughs> girls don't fucking want anything to do with them. Except <laughs> Infinity War, he it doesn't seem like he has any interest in getting his fuck on with anybody. But 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 then in the comics, he's like he wants to get his fuck on with the uh, with death. And it's like in the comic books, death is like I don't want to fuck you, Thanos, fucking creep, go away. <laughs> she fucks Deadpool. Right? Yeah, down with Deadpool. But when it came to Thanos, and he, uh, the reason why he assembles the Affinity Gauntlet, uh, the, the Affinity Stone, yeah, and wipes out half the universe was with the decimation. Was it? He was all he. He did it all to impress Death. Yeah, because he wanted to marry Death. He wanted to get down Death's pants, and Death was just like she'd fuck with him, but she was not interested. Okay, like take a hint, buddy. I know you've heard of the word no. It's in your name, Thanos. He's like. That stranger you met at the bar, and you're about two, maybe three beers in with the guy. You've had a smoke together. Uh, you begin talking history. You guys seem to be clicking. And then uh, Hitler, Nazis, World War II comes up, tangentially, as in you see that they force the connection there. And then it's like, uh, yeah, you know, and Hitler and national, Soci national socialism. And you're like, yeah. And the conversation pauses because you know the next thing that motherfucker is going to say is, you know, Obama was a national socialist. <laughs> and then you're like, <laughs> fuck! Uh, we were fucking... <sighs> fuck, fuck, fuck. I would have been your Facebook friend, buddy. I would have been your Facebook friend. Yeah, so that's Thanos' relatability. Can't get laid. Thinks Obama's a Nazi. But he doesn't tell you that at first. He, he saves the, the monologue for later. He reels you in and weaves his web with Paul Malls and Coors Light. And then it's like... Now I want to end half of everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's a shot of Thor looking solemn like, fuck, I should have aimed for the head. Well, remember in Thor Ragnarok where it's like, are you the god of hammers? You don't need the hammer. The hammer's always been inside you, son. You are, you are the hammer. And then it's like, victory. Now it's beginning of Infinity War. And it's like, oh, fuck, no, I really need a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, the... We're, we have this really funny, really feel-good film about you know realizing your own self-worth and that it comes from within and you know, no, nothing external. And then the very next movie, next bad guy comes along. You're like, fuck, I really uh, need something yeah, external. <laughs> yeah, we need to get a little two-dimensional to fix this. <laughs> a, de a deeper arc isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to stop this guy. <laughs> okay. This is going to work, Steve. I know it is. Because I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't. So I think the real question going into Avengers Endgame is, like, where does Thor get, like, his, his like, not Thor clothes? I uh, figure he just went to his nearest sporting goods store and got him a nice Carhartt jacket with Duluth trading pants. Maybe Eric Selvig bought him the clothes. Maybe. Or maybe he keeps clothes at his place. No? Or, I mean... Or maybe there was some at the Avengers compound, because... I mean, he, he's got a casual set of clothes lying somewhere, because when he went to meet up with Selvig at Age of Ultron, he was already wearing a hoodie and shit. Is Miller's outpost still a thing? <laughs> I don't know. I just get my clothes from uh, Walmart and WWEshop.com. I'm not going to fight your war. I'm going to end it. Well, hey there, Thunder fans. How are you? 
We have something special for you today. We're going to give you a little segment of what's on our tube. So in this segment, we're going to talk a bit about what we're watching and we're going to ask you what you're watching as well. So lately we've just started a brand new anime, new to us at least. It's called Yuri on Ice. Yuri. It's amazing. I, oh, I love it. It's it is amazing, but there's so many like gay undertones. Yes, every all the characters are super beautiful, and every time they look into each other's eyes, it is uh, they sparkle and radiate. And then little weird blushing scenes, you know, so the characters get. Little, oh yeah the main character especially yeah and i mean i've watched some anime you've watched a lot more anime than i have i have i have and there's the part of me every time that something like that happens i'm like just make out already just just be boyfriends damn it but anybody that watches anime uh frequently will know that in anime the there's a theme that comes up all the time and that's unrequited love <laughs> That, so they always want this oh senpai it, it, there's there's always like an older um like mentor mentor type care mentor person mentor character and it's like will senpai notice me notice me senpai but at the same time it's the wanting it, but not wanting it at the same time. Yes. Every time, like, so this character will be like, oh, would you like, would you like me to be your girlfriend, your boyfriend? And then that other character will explode instantly yeah, into They some... get super flustered. Yes. And they're like, no, no, nothing like that. Never. But really, they totally want it. And they'll be like random hand touchings or oh no victor straight up grabbed yuri's face and like put his finger on his lips and like got really close together and it looked like they were gonna kiss it but, did look like they were gonna but you kiss. knew they weren't gonna kiss no, because no. it's anime well i think kissing is happening more in anime now than ever and i don't know maybe that's cultural changes how but, old is yuri on ice though yuri is it on ice Ooh, that's a good question. When did that come out? Ooh, it's it's pretty pretty recent. Oh, okay. I would, I would say within this last year. I'll look that up. But do you think that this anime is actually going to get that gay? Do you think they're actually going to go there, or do you think it's going to be a continued story of like unrequited love? Because Yuri obviously has a crush on Victor, and then. It seems like Victor's like okay with that and into it. But then there's also the is he Russian? The Russian Yuri, mm -hmm. who they call Yurio. Yurio, yeah. Since they're both named Yuri. He seems kind of gay too, but at the same time he kinda he gives me more of a, a bi vibe. Yes, he does. But I think it's also this anime since it's about uh skaters ice skaters yeah there is a little bit of androgyny vibe and uh, well they've straight up talked about how victor gender fluidity yeah they talked about victor had a routine where he had really long hair and kind of the point of the routine was to show like femininity and masculinity and androgyny so i don't know how gay is yuri on ice gonna get um, from I'll give it a six out of ten. Six out of ten, gay. So you don't think there's going to be any boy love relationships mm -hmm. on this show? Maybe very last second they might give us like, oh, maybe we should explore these new feelings or these untapped feelings, kind of thing. They they might do that in the end. And then. In the series. <laughs> in the series. This is totally going to be a, a standalone series, probably. 
Because oh, he even starts off at the beginning is talking about how the main character, who isn't that old, but he's thinking of retiring, and he is the ripe old age of 23. 23. Well, you can't be an ice skater forever, but Victor was still like a successful ice skater, and he's only 27, but he's got four years on Yuri, so why does he need to retire at 23 if he still has potentially for maybe more years left possibly but i think part of it is his personality and he feels down about himself and his yeah he doesn't have as much self-confidence as victor or as yurio the other yuri So this this is a little bit about Yuri, Yuri on Ice, and I did find out the information. It came out in 2016. Ooh. It's well worth a watch. Uh, we suggest if you're into this kind of thing, if you're into sports anime, um, and this is specifically about uh, ice skating or male ice skating, um, check it out. Uh, you can find it right now on Crunchyroll. You can stream it for free. I believe with commercials and if you have a pro account of course you can stream without commercials but what we would like to know uh, send us a tweet tell us what you're watching what's on your tube right now yeah what's on your tube We want to do something a little different here in Studio D tonight. Normally we have uh, local artists, unsigned talent on the show. Uh, What I would like to do is play one of my uh, favorite holiday songs from when I was a child. Uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary, Light One Candle. Uh, It's a Hanukkah song I grew up with. This is a live recording off of their A Holiday Celebration album from 1988, possibly my favorite uh, holiday album, and I hope you enjoy. Shine. 
a 30 second ad spot to the Black Market Toast podcast where we take a piece of media out of the cupboard, dust it off, toast it up, and serve it as something completely new. What? Well, it means we either listen to or watch a movie or TV show or piece of music and then it's not like we just use whatever media we pick as a conversation starter (laughs) well because it's fun okay listen to it on your podcatcher of choice and follow us on facebook or something so i i'm wearing a christmas sweater right now and it has all these cat faces on it. Uh, I don't know. How many cat faces does it have on it? Five. And they're all, like, adorable. Like, the eyes are super big. Yeah, the eyes are super big. And they all kind of sparkle. And I'm not talking into the microphone because I'm looking at my cat faces. Some of them look a little disappointed. They they have different looks on their faces. My favorite one is the one at the bottom with its mouth open that's kind of looking up, hopefully maybe like someone was going to give it a treat. A bunch of Christmas kitties on it. A bunch of sparkle magic Christmas kitties. Sounds like, oh. like maybe one of the best sweaters ever. Meowy Christmas. Meowy Christmas? Oh my gosh, you know a friend of mine just sent me an awesome Christmas present. It's a shirt that has, it's, it's based on an old photograph of Aleister Crowley. But instead, it's a cat. Nice. I bet it's adorable. Nice. Kavika has a pretty sweet Hanukkah sweater. It has a menorah on it, and it has little lights and a little battery pack, and the little candles light up. No. I pretty much love anything that ha- that lights up, but I love my menorah sweater. It's amazing. Hey, everybody listening right now, head over to Facebook to check out Kavika's Super Christmas Swag. And you can vote! Oh my gosh, let's do that. Let's make this a contest. Everybody go over to the Facebook, on th- the Thunder Talk on Facebook, and we'll be posting two photographs of uh, Kavika's two Christmas, or one Christmas, one Hanukkah sweater, and vote to see which one you like the best. Yeah! Woo! I, I can do that. It's going to be the Hanukkah sweater, because the Hanukkah... I don't, I don't know... Um kitties are adorable but i don't know the other one is very classic very nice and it lights up kitties are the best and i'm not just saying that because my cat's laying on the other side of my bed Uh, my same friend kelly uh, she's rad she's a friend of the show Uh, she lives up in canada and she sent me that uh alistair crowley kitty shirt and the and a box of wonder bars you ever heard of wonder bars candy bar Wonder Bar? Are they wondrous? Oh my god, they are wonderful. So does it have a gooey feeling, filling? Or is it yeah, like what? a nougat? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's... Hold on a second, let me go grab them. Ooh, sounds wondrous. I agree. Alright, well, I'm gonna eat one right now. I'm gonna eat, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna have a few bites of this. Uh, a peanut butter caramel experience. Dual caramel... Arc- oh, and then, it's, and then it says the same thing in French. So if people listen to you eat this bar or this candy bar right now, is that uh, what ASMR is? Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, my my this is my Christmas miracle present gift from Kelly up in uh, Toronto. Canada. She's in Toronto. Man, she should sit you maple syrup. That would be. Yeah. I don't want to be cliche like that though. No, be cliche. Fucking Canada has some really good maple syrup. That's two on the nose. Yeah, I mean, they know they do, but they ain't And they're good at hockey. And they're good at hockey. And they have Ryan Reynolds. Motherfucking Ryan Reynolds. I'll describe it as it's going. It'll be like the moon landing, but not on TV. (laughs) (laughs) Do it. Describe it. Experience it. Mm, mm. Well, well, it's really good. So is it like the wafer part is made out of peanut butter well peanut butter is um it's like crisped it seems like it's not like peanut brittle but it's like peanut brittle's way less motivated like younger sibling that just lives at home forever and nobody seems to fucking say anything even though peanut brittle put itself through college and it really made something of itself <laughs> just like yum, 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 anyways, yum. So that's good it's really good and then there's the caramel uh candy bar caramel i've always been a fan of yeah wonder bar uh, 10 out of 10. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, be the first to uh, say anything to us in any capacity. Uh, what's our phone number again? Sexy Thor. 
864-715-9446. One more time, that's 864-715-9446. Yeah, so be the first to give us a call, and we will send you an autographed Wonder Bar. That's right, an official Canada Kelly Cadbury Wonder Bar. Autographed by your friends here at Thunder Talk. Uh, also, be the first to vote for Kavika's Sweaters on our Facebook page. That's Thunder Talk on Facebook. And we'll also send you a Wonder Bar. Mmm. Dan's Sexy Candy Reviews. dear friend dan we are just here to wish you a happy birthday happy birthday and while you may be losing your hair and having more aches and pains in your body he's getting really old just remember your ears will never stop growing that's that's actually true and very weird yeah so happy birthday um way to not die good job yeah way to way to keep it alive man Try to do that for a long time. Yeah, uh, happy birthday, everybody! Welcome to Thunder Talk. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Lightning Lad uh, here on the mic, transmitting out there to uh, all the uh, Thunder faithful in Internet Land. Uh, right now, we are joined uh, up here in Studio D. Of course, we have uh, Sexy Thor. When am I not here? And then we have Tina here. Uh, Tina Jones from Thunder Talk. Yeah. Hey. Hey, Studio D. What's up, hey. Tina? How you doing? I'm super excited to be here for <laughs> Thunder Talk. Her uh, first episode of Thunder Talk. It's true. Hey, hey. So, what's your favorite episode of Thunder Talk so far that you've listened to? I really like the first one. That's a bullshit answer. You're lying. I know it totally is. Yeah, Chris. Hey, <laughs> what's up, y'all? What's up, yo? How you Chris, doing? His second episode back. That's right. Chris. Yes, thank you. Thank Chris, you. Chris, Chris. Good, good to be back, Dan. Uh, excuse me, Lightning Lad. And uh, hey, what else? Happy yeah, good birthday. Good to be back too, Sexy Thor. You know, fuck him. Happy birthday. <laughs> we got our good man, uh, good friend Tristan up here in the house. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. So we're all here for my birthday. I'm turning 40. And that's, uh, according, to, according to humans, a lot of humans, that means something. What I want to know is, what does that mean to you? You can go ahead and hit us up at SexyThorsThunderTalk at gmail.com. Also, our dear, sweet, honorable friends at the Nerd Bliss Podcast. Hey, hey. Uh, which, hey. I, which actually partially uh, also is me. So, I'm, you know, big ups to me. I'm part time. Uh, what's that phone number over there? 864-715-9446. 40 years old. I have spun around our star 40 times on this rock. Are you dizzy? A little bit. Uh, we want to know what uh, what does mortality mean to you? Getting older. Here you are in your human suit. Uh, it's born. It dies. All that in between. And forty, uh, technically, statistically speaking, here in the Western world, is oh, more or less halfway there. Let's go around here. Let's go around here, uh, Chris. Yes. How you doing? Uh Older than you. That's how I'm doing. Yes, yes, you are. This is this is Chris Jones of the Nerd Bliss Podcast. Everybody, yes. stop stop what you're doing. Forty six times, almost forty seven times around uh, around the star. I, I I don't feel like I'm can say too much about getting old because I'm also unhealthy because of poor life choices. So uh, if I had taken better care of myself. I might this, these might be the best years of my life, uh, but uh, no, my my knees hurt and my back hurts, and uh, my feet hurt, and uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, it doesn't get any better, Dan. So <laughs> it's fucking dark, bro. Are you cool with me using that on the air? <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth, isn't it? You know, now I'm not saying I can't turn this around to some degree. I'm not saying I can't make it better. I'm just saying right now. You know, Chris being where Chris is at uh, 46 and a half. Getting old kind of sucks. I, I guess, you know, because it's inevitable, you know, we should focus on the positive things we have until we, till we're gone. You know, I have to say, Chris, I'm also moving a little slower. 
I, yeah. I am, and it's uh, I haven't really cha- changed anything. Uh, Welcome to the fourth decade club, I guess. There's always this idea that, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to hit the gym. Tomorrow I'm going to start making better life choices, and then I'll go back to the way it felt 5, 10, 15 years ago. And you never do. You never I do. never do. Self, <laughs> self-platitudes. But you know what? We're going to buck that trend. You know what? We're going to go right now. We're going to grab these mics. and No, we're not really going to do no, that. No, we're going to do yeah, shit. No. Yeah. no. So, Tina, how do you feel? <sighs> well, luckily I'm not as old as Dan. So. Uh, yeah, you're like, what, 20 minutes younger than I am? What the fuck? <laughs> Come on. Well, I just turned 38 in August. Which is still pretty old. Yeah, no, you and I are the same guy. No. Yeah, we're yeah just, I we're, mean, we're like in that whatevs. ballpark yeah. of like bullshit. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, remember all the shit you were going to do with your life? <laughs> Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> nope. Nope. And in order to maintain the life that I have, I don't really have the time or more importantly the energy to do things that would change any of that. Uh out there, Thunder Faithful, if you're the type who's around our age that's still having to put on knee pads <laughs> kind of crack that jaw. Crack, and, crack, crack. And let crack. and let life do what it's gonna do with you, uh, give us a call. What's that number again? Eight six four seven one five nine four four six. If we want to talk about mortality, our dear friend Tristan here uh, does indeed actually have a story that I think may very well speak. It's, it's, it, should, it speaks to all of us. Okay. It, if you don't mind, as much as you're comfortable sure. yeah. in, in talking about Tristan, um, if you could uh, tell us uh, tell us about yourself and what mortality means to you. I play guitar. I've played guitar for about eleven years. I love working on computers and using them too. I am also now legally blind, and I have been for a little over six years, which leads to story time. We got some thunder reel for y'all. No. Okay, so on September 23rd at about 9 p.m., I had spent the day in Atlanta. I live in, you know, Greenville, South Carolina. But I had spent the day in Atlanta with my girlfriend at the time. Uh, on the drive back at about 9 p.m., um, the car we were in, I was I was asleep in the back seat next to her, and my roommate was driving the car. It died in the mental, uh, the middle of the interstate. The electricity completely cut out. Yeah. Um, so hardly anybody else on the interstate could see us, which led to a few cars swerving. But unfortunately, a pickup rear-ending us from uh, from behind. That's rear-ending. Rear-ended us at about 70 miles an hour. Which led to really unfortunate accident. Um, I, well, I'll, let, I'll go down the list of my injuries. My pelvis shattered. It has 16 bolts of steel in it now. It's separated from my spine. I had a stomach tube as well as a colostomy bag that was odiferous um i had a tracheotomy my metacarpals in my left hand that's the bones between the fingers and the wrist all have steel bolts in them because they all shattered uh one wrist bone in my right hand has a steel bolt in it now i have titanium above my left eyebrow and in the right side of my jaw my skull shattered uh my jaw was broken into five pieces. I'm legally blind. I can't seem to smell very well. I constantly have ear infections because one of the bones was misplaced in my left ear canal. Um, but I'm alive. The other two people in the car are not, unfortunately. Um, I was the only one that lived from it, and I'm fairly certain it's because I was asleep during the wreck. Um, What I learned from it, well, first off, I I spent about three months in as an inpatient in the hospital after that, including in the brain trauma section of the hospital. Um, 
and another nine months until I was off of all of my meds, I could actually walk around, use public transit, do a considerable amount more than I ever thought I would be able to again. Um, but really what I learned from that is just just doing everything you can and being sedentary is all right. But when you lose the things that you took for granted, all of a sudden you want to do more that you couldn't do anymore, that you can't do anymore. So your life after the accident. Yeah. Versus the life before. Yeah. Um, as weird as it may sound, I've actually grown less frustrated, but that's also because I was considerably more introverted beforehand. I had issues dealing with people. And ever since I've actually been forced to learn how to deal with people. Um, I still play guitar. I would, you know, I would personally say at least that I can play it better than I could before. Um, Interesting. I still work with computers. I just can't seem to read that well anymore at all. Um, I can read inch tall text from about a foot away from my face, and that's as well as I can read. Do you mind if I ask how old you are? I am 27. This happened when I was 20. Kind of puts it in perspective. Hmm? Right? Uh, perspective is a nice way to put it, yeah. Here I am asking the question, oh my God, look at me, I'm 40. <laughs> Mortality. Thank you for bringing that kind of insight uh, yeah. into all of this. Um, yeah, my, my biggest advice on mortality is be thankful for what you've got while you've got it. Um, do the things you can that you enjoy, for sure. Just take advantage of the things that you enjoy and your ability to do them. Hello. Have you ever wondered how much Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster sold Superman's rights to DC for? Or which uh, popular football star was uh, the Sam Wilson the Falcons' physical appearance based on? You can find all that and more at the History of Comics podcast, a podcast dedicated to the creators, events, history, and the companies that made the great comic book medium. Hosted and created by your friendly neighborhood, J.T. Wheatley. Please listen, give it a listen at iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, and all our podcasting platforms. Thank you, and go ahead and enjoy yourself a good comic book. So the best gift I ever got for Christmas as a child, I think I was about five years old, and it was the My Little Pony Dream Castle, which was a huge deal because, of course, my family didn't have a lot of money growing up. But at that point in time, my dad had a job that gave him a good Chris, uh, Christmas bonus. So during the year, you know, we didn't get a lot, but we usually got a really good Christmas. And so I got the My Little Pony Dream Castle and it was amazing because it was this big pink castle and it had you know little turrets and it came with a pony and little crowns you could put on their heads and like a throne and little like golden jumping hoops to jump your ponies through and it was all mine because of course when you're the youngest of four kids like a lot of times we would get things to share or you know it was like yours but your siblings still wanted to mess with it and since I was the youngest and I was a girl I got a lot of hand-me-downs but the My Little Dr Pony Dream Castle was all mine because my sister is five years older she didn't care about my my castle at that point in time or maybe she just didn't like want to care about it I don't know but my, of course my brothers didn't mess with it you know, sometimes I would play with their toys and sometimes they would play with some of mine, but nobody really cared about the castle the way I did. So it was amazing. And I saw like the huge box under the tree and I was like, please let it be the My Little Pony Dream Castle. And it was, which was so awesome. But then 
I would say the other best present I got as a child was a group present. And that was probably a couple years after that, a few years after that. As a group gift for all four of us kids, we got the original Nintendo. And so we got the Nintendo. And of course, it came with like the Duck Hunt and the original Mario on the one cartridge. And then they also got us the first Legend of Zelda game with the gold cartridge. And so we played the crap out of that. And of course, that was an amazing gift. But I did have to share it, but we loved it. And it was amazing. And those were my best gifts as a child. that's going to take the cake is the one that I found out that I'm going to get this year. <laughs> I found out I'm getting for Christmas tickets to a WWE live event at Bon Secours in February. It's not like the televised shows that are on Monday and Tuesday. It's just going to be a like a live event house show, which is sort of a non-canon, if you will, where they just have all the superstars come together, wrestling some matches, take some pictures. Everybody's happy. It's just you just can't watch it on USA or the WWE Network. It's just, you know, revisiting old rivalries, you know, just giving you some cool matchups. Uh, as far as the coolest present that I've received so far uh, was probably back in 2001 when my aunt and my step uncle got me an original Xbox. Not to be confused with the Xbox One, but the first Xbox, along with the Halo Combat Evolved. This is also Xbox with that really weird controller. Like, huge and bulky. And, like, it had the black and white buttons that were, like, on top and slanted and oval and weird shit. And I have enjoyed my Xbox over the last 17 years. I can't even think of the best gift I have ever received for either Hanukkah or Christmas. That is such a, a daunting thing, I think. Um, I don't know. I'll give it my best shot. I remember whenever I was probably nine or ten, and we were living here in Oklahoma, and we were actually, we had already celebrated Hanukkah, but as many people who celebrate Hanukkah know, you most likely would get um, practical gifts. And so I got uh, the usual assortment of books, uh, pajamas, um, candy, that kind of thing. And this Christmas, um, my brother and I would come out all, you know, bright eyed, bushy tailed, probably 4.50 in the morning, something like that, some ungodly hour. And there they are. There's some, by our standards now, very small TVs. And we, my brother and I both got a, a matching pair of TVs, like big old CRT versions kind of thing. And we got several other gifts that Christmas, but I think that that was probably the best gift. I think my brother was, was like a, a Sega Genesis. I think that was his favorite one. I don't know. This is a really good question, though. Nineteen eighty-eight. Boom! Christmas morning, the original NES, and it was the one. And of course, it had the controllers and the gun, and it had the power pad. It was. It was like this. Uh, this vinyl plastic mat that you would unfold, and it had uh, three rows, four buttons each. And divided down the middle, blue buttons on the uh, left, red buttons on the right. Plugged it into the Nintendo. And it had the Olympic Games on it. And I remember my dad, whom I inherited an awesome eating disorder from, was like, now you're going to use that power pad, right? That's why we got it. Like, I hadn't even heard of this fucking power pad. It was a gimmick. It was a gimmick. <laughs> it was maybe the best gimmick. It was a couple steps up from, like, Robbie the Robot. If you all remember Robbie the Robot. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it was better than the power glove. Total fucking gimmick. It was like, you make sure to use it. I want you to use that 30 minutes a day. Like, here's the Nintendo, but goddammit, <laughs> you're going to sweat. You're going to sweat, fatty. You're going to sweat. 
And even like that whole like, oh, fuck, there's commitment with this fucking thing. Uh, even that couldn't completely ruin <laughs> the moment for me. Power pads sucked ass. Like you can actually sit on the ground and hit it with your hands and get the uh, get your little guy to run and jump better <laughs> and faster than actually standing on this thing. And like trying to run. Because you'd run and jump and all of that and sweat and I wasn't having any of that shit. I uh, didn't leave my room for like a week. I got total Nintendo thumb after like 72 hours of just straight playing Mario and elevator action. Uh, then after that, it became the family's Nintendo. And uh, <laughs> funny thing is, though, at the end of it all, at the end of all of that, that was Christmas of 88. My Nintendo was long gone. All that shit just totally out of my life. Uh, 2001, when I was moving from where I was all the way out to where I did, there was a family storage unit. I had to go into and unload and sell and take and whatever. And in the back of the storage unit was the power pad. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the power pad and I had a moment uh, by the dumpster of some, uh, some storage U-Haul whatever place. It's like at the edge of the dumpster, our fellowship <laughs> comes to an end. <laughs> It's Dan's Bad Advice column. Fuck yeah. Dear Dan, my wife Teresa and I have been happily married for 22 years and have two very active, beautiful children. Our oldest child has been playing on a traveling soccer team for the last five years. Teresa and I go all over the country to watch our child play and have become very close to the head coach, Sven, and his family. I recently learned through another parent that Teresa dated Sven for three years prior to us getting married. This parent informed me the relationship between Teresa and Sven was so serious they had discussed marriage. When I heard it, I was very upset. I couldn't understand why my wife would keep that information from me all this time. When I asked her, she said it was true, but she hadn't felt that it had been necessary to tell me. Teresa hasn't always been the greatest communicator, but I think this has crossed the line. I feel I have been misled and lied to. She acted as if she had never even met him. It makes me wonder how many other secrets she's hiding from me. I'm having a hard time trusting her now, and I feel there's something seriously wrong with our relationship. I'm also uncomfortable around Sven and his family. I wonder if his wife knows about their relationship. I mean, I've been to the beach with this guy. He wears Speedos and obviously has a massive Johnson. Do I have the right to be upset about this situation? Pee Wee Soccer Dad. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, it sounds like you have an insecurity issue here. Definitely some, uh, definitely some personal uh, insecurity issues, Pee Wee Soccer Dad. <sighs> wow, you know, uh, this one really, this one really kind of hits home for me. Uh, can we, uh, can we do this off the record. You don't want to read your answer to Pee Wee Soccer Dad? Yeah, I don't. I don't want to record this. Uh, okay. So this won't be in the show, right? Uh, of course not. I respect your privacy, Lightning Lad. Cool. 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 So, so when I married my uh, my wife, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to say it. I was really jealous to find out that she had a, uh, an active dating life before me. The, cali the caliber of, of men prior to me really, really made me insecure in a way that I was very... Uh, not not secure with my dick is so small they removed the digit off the end of my social security number <laughs> dude she's still friends with so many of these guys and I and like I creep them on Facebook right go on and they're just they're just so fit you know like 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 they own houses and they're happy with polo shirts and, and muscles just so many muscles they play golf and they, they play golf and uh ride dirt bikes and they just they just like they just look so happy <laughs> you know they just they just look like they're having fun there. with life and it, it makes me miserable happy well adjusted normal looking dudes <sighs> yikes so many muscles so well adjusted you know that disabled placard I have in my car yeah yeah my dick is so small like I get to park in the front of every parking lot now <laughs> I'm the first one to heart all of her Instagrams you see my Facebook. Yeah, you upload pictures of the two of you like three times before noon. Yeah, I mean, it's because I'm a loving husband, and I'm excited about our relationship. 
she doesn't ever tag me in her photos or put anything up. You know what I do? You know, people don't people don't think if you really want to creep hard. Uh, Pinterest is awesome. You really get into their mind. The fascinating thing about Pinterest is you get to express yourself through the thoughts and feelings of other people. <laughs> right? It's the best. You know, I got a really good crock pot pizza recipe off of Pinterest, but that's not the point. The other day, she put up a meme, and it said, I want to do everything I've never done, dot, 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 with you. Did she tag you in it? No, she, she doesn't want to do shit with me. I think it's so small. Uh, when receiving head, she said, thanks for the floss. Now, where's your dick? We haven't been intimate since the Obama administration. His, his first administration. Whoa, but yeah, his first term, that, that was a long time ago. My dick is so small. Uh, you know the Hubble telescope? Yeah, the Hubble telescope, yes. Well, uh, its second function is to explore the cosmos. You know what its first function is? Find my dick. My dick is so small that I make my dick is so small jokes on my own podcast. What? What? My dick is so small that when she says, is that a pencil in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? I'm like, oh, no, it's it's a pencil in my pocket. <laughs> I mean, there's that's it. It's just I had a pencil in my pocket. <laughs> so uh, what advice would you give for Pee Wee Soccer Dad about you know, getting over his wife's past with Sven and all that? Oh, oh, I never got over it. It's Dan's Bad Advice Column. Fuck yeah. So I've been looking through all my pictures. I'm trying to find uh, some good pictures of both sweaters. Vote. Vote on those sweaters. Where can everybody find us, yo? You can find me on Twitter at KTSA Rambles On. That's K T S E A Rambles On. I am at Bethy Lala on Twitter. And I am Facebook.com slash sexy voice Thor, Twitter.com slash Thunder Talk One, that's the number one, and Instagram at Thunder Talk Thor. What about you, Lightning Lad? Oh, well, I'm here at home, and if you want to stop on by, uh, I'm available. I mean, you know, just hit me up. Just come on over. We'll watch some YouTube. Eat Wonder Bars? Yeah, hit me up. We'll eat some Wonder Bars. Cool. You can help me fold laundry. Awesome. We're also on, on Facebook, Thunder Talk. I, you just type Thunder Talk into Facebook. Is that is that how it works? Something like that. That's correct. You'll see our uh, super famous logo. Bra. Published in 13.5 <laughs> magazines. It's quite thunderous. Thunderous. So, uh, Beth and Kavika, what are your what are your Christmas plans? I think we're going Christmas story with this one, aren't we? Where we go to a Chinese restaurant and uh, we have Christmas dinner. Oh yeah, with your mom. So yeah, that's our that's those are our big plans for Christmas Day. We'll probably come yeah. home, do some dessert, uh, drink some champagne, open some presents. Uh, in the morning, we will be volunteering with uh, Red Andrew's uh, Christmas dinner. It's a it's put on by one of the local organizations here in Oklahoma City, and we will be feeding the homeless and underprivileged at the Cox Center. Um, and I think uh, breakfast starts at 8 in the morning. 9. 9 in the morning. And we get there a couple hours before. And help set up. And then we go with people and, um, you know, help them sit down and talk to them and wish them a Merry Christmas. And what else are we doing that day? I think we might even have something else planned. Uh, I think that evening we may be going to see my family. Yes, and then that evening we'll go see her family, and we might all finish it up with a movie. So, oh wow, nice. Well, God love you both. That's that's. Thank thank you on behalf of our species, for putting yourselves out there and volunteering like that. Uh, and I don't mean meeting Beth's family, hanging out with Beth's family. I mean the, the volunteering in the morning. Well, I mean you know, family. 
Yeah, right? <laughs> family is family. Uh, but so, boss, what's up? What's up Christmas morning? What are you, uh, what are you getting your thunder self into? Uh, working at my new place until 6 o'clock and then heading over to my aunt's place for an epic holiday feast. Well, good. Right on. Well, tell your aunt I said hi. Yeah, tell her hi. Like some, some internet people you've never met say hi. Will do. The Thunder Nation says hi. What about you, Lightning Lad? What are you doing on Christmas? Oh, well, uh, I, I have kids, right? Doing, doing, you know, family stuff. So do, is it true? We don't have children. Do they actually wake up at five in the morning? No, not my kids. My kids are rad. They wake up around uh, 830. You know, it's actually uh, pretty chill and awesome. Yeah, and I don't, I don't put up with that shit. 5 a.m. Fuck that. I just went to bed after putting together all of your new, after putting together all your new stuff under the tree. I remember being a kid and waking up early, but knowing to not wake my parents up until at least 6 a.m. I used to go peek at my presents, just straight up. Well, I, I would never peek at my presents. Um, we thought about it several times, but we never did. I think my brother did. But we get up super stupid early, you know, like 4.50, almost 5 o'clock, you know, and we'd be jumping up and down on the bed, you know, trying to wake my mom up. I had three other siblings, and I would go out there, and my parents would make a display of our the presents. Like, oh, Santa brought you unpackaged gifts on display. And all we had areas of the living room near the tree, like different zones that were ours. And I had two brothers, one older and one younger. And I would go Christmas morning, and I would like look through their, like try to decipher whose pile is whose. And then I would grab from their piles and put them over near mine, or I'd swap stuff out. Like, oh, that's cooler. I'm going to swap this out. After I determined the pile, well, this one must be mine. And Christmas morning, and this happened like three times in my childhood, I'd wake up, and as my parents like, oh, I think that's your pile. Oh, yeah, and that's your pile. It'd always be like, my mom would always sit there for a second, and she'd be like, oh, that's, she'd always point to like the lamest pile. It'd be like, yeah, that's your pile right over there. <laughs> Well, maybe it was because she knew you were going to steal the other kids. No, she toys. waited. She, she, she straight up knew. She's the one that bought that shit. You know, I buy a lot of kid shit now, and I know exactly what I'm buying and where it's going because I also play with, like, half of them. What's your favorite toy right now? Um, oh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a fucking Star Wars toy, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, uh, Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, Say goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Love you, mean it. Happy holidays. Goodbye, friends. We love you. Thanks for listening. Uh, uh, Yeah, be well. Keep in touch and do good work. Merry, happy, happy holidays, everybody. Bye. 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 Thunder Talk is a production of the Weirdos Workshop, starring Adam Wedston, Kavika Allo, Dan Klink, and Beth Allo. This broadcast was made possible by contributions from the Nerd Bliss Podcast, 4 Foot 1 Media, and by listeners like you. Thank you. Be well, drink, fight, and make your ancestors proud.